Okay, so there's a uh, great paradox here, and I'm only celebrating the culmination of a wonderful Maimonides program, but on the other hand, in a way it's the end, which is a little bit emotional, a little bit sad, uh, Maimonides is over. Pity me. Um, <laughs> my favorite part, though, so far of the night was the line and the mainlash. <laughs> Okay, just uh, sneaking throughout the room. And it, remind, it reminded me of when we first moved to Maryland in August, uh, we went to the DMV. To <laughs> 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 the MDA, uh, the MDC if you're from Arizona. Um, and there's a long line. And if you think about it, it's the great equalizer. The line at the DMV, the line at main dish because no matter what your background is, what your connections are, you're waiting your spot in line. <laughs> There's no shortcuts. It reminds me of, in a way, or many ways, a park. You go to a park, a communal space, no matter what your background is, your status, your economic group in the past year, a child, an elderly person, all have equal stake at the park, each enjoying it at their own way, participating. A park, a DMV line, the buffet line, no matter where you're from, who's behind you, it's your spot in line. Uh, a great rabbi, a teacher of mine, once said that what a park is to space, Shabbat is to time. Shabbat is as well a great equalizer. The stresses of the week, the competition of business, the competition of relationships and maybe struggles that may come with it. Your own interests being pulled in different ways on Shabbat's that I to step aside and cease from all that chaotic, incessant stimuli and uh, really connect with yourself, with your family, with the people around you. And when it comes to a Buffet line, for example, we'll back to that. The I think I think it's really important when we finish an event like Maimonides to have a buffet, not only in celebration of what we've accomplished, and in gratitude to the people that made it happen, of course. All right, Rabbi K, we've we've heard about the quantity of what he's done to make this happen, all the details, but also the quality. You imagine standing on North Campus, stopping people. Jewish Turks, Jewish Turks, anybody Jewish Turks is trying to find people to present them the opportunity of what my mind could be to somebody. It's Rabbi Z, who was able to not only create the my mind's curriculum, but recreate and recreate and recreate not only hours of preparation, but at this point probably weeks, maybe months of preparation into the event, of the volunteers, into the Shabbaton host, and all the people that make it happen. But in addition, the line at the buffet is the test as to was Maimonides successful? Because, yes, you can learn new perspectives, thought-provoking ideas, but did you change? And that you can tell when you bring out food and people are hungry. Because that's the point when you can tell. Are you a little bit more patient? Are you a little less indulgent? Are you more refined three months later than you were? And that's really the goal of Maimonides, is not just truth by thought, but truth by living. The Torah is not just a philosophy, a thought exercise, an intellectual debate, but it's truth by living. Is it having an effect? Is it making you a better person than you were before you engage with it? Song is a fascinating, another fascinating paradigm. Because song, to, in order to create song, in order to create music, it takes intellect, it takes skill. But song, the medium of song, isn't meant to reach your intellect. Right, it's not trying to teach you new skills, it's meant to reach your emotion, try to move you, to make you cry, to make you sing, to make you dance. Right, so it's going from intellect to emotion. Now, fascinating enough, at the culmination of the Torah, the finishing of the Torah, the last 
instruction that Hashem gives the Jewish people, number 613. 613th commandment is write for yourself this song. Right? Hashem tells the Jewish people, write a Torah scroll. This is the Torah scroll we have today in all arcs and all synagogues and temples. The Torah scroll says 613th commandment. But interestingly, or fascinatingly, Hashem refers to it as a song, right for it, a song. Why? Because the Torah is not meant as just a thought exercise. And, oh wow, we had great discussions, and it was really cool, cool ideas. But it's meant to touch your emotions, meant to make your relationship stronger, to make your life more passionate, more relevant, more engaged with yourself, with others. That's the song. I really think that the best part of a song when you're listening to a song is when the song ends. And the, song, the music dies, it's quiet in the room. So Allison talked, Rebecca also, Allison and Rebecca, <laughs> Allison talked about the five minutes after the song and staying after. Right, for me, it's like 10 minutes or 15 minutes after. I right, have Carly helping clean up the chairs. But that, that after effect, the, the buzz that's still there when you had that great song. Okay, we say in the morning prayers, <coughs> The God that chooses the Shire Zimra. In Hebrew, it's the song of songs. Shire also means the leftover. The leftover song. What's left after everybody singing and the concert dies down, that, that minute when the music ends, but people are still singing and trying to re engage in that moment. That's the most beautiful moment of a song. Judaism needs song, we need more music. You look around at Judaism today. When do we have more song? Perky Avot, the Ethics of the Father, 6-6, six, six, chapter 6, Mishnah 6 says that Torah is only acquired, Judaism is only acquired when there's joy. You need joy. It can't be dry, it's got to be alive, it's got to have emotion, it's got to touch, touch that song, it's got to touch those notes. Maybe with this we can understand a very cryptic verse, one of the most cryptic verses in my opinion. Exodus chapter 34 says that Moses came down from Sinai, Karen Arpana. His face had pillars of light. Pillars of light. So the Midrash, the oral Torah, the key to understanding the written Torah says, what does this mean? Pillars of light on his face. Where did the pillars of light come from? So the Midrash says that there was leftover ink. When God wrote the Torah, there was leftover ink. And Moses <coughs> saw the leftover ink, took the ink, and spread it on his face, and that was the source of his light. Really weird, right? <laughs> so there's leftover ink. First of all, why is there leftover ink? God's perfect. There's no miscalculation. Number one, two, Took it, he put it on his face. What does that mean? And the idea is, is that after the completion of the entire Torah, after you complete an entire semester of Maimonides, you have so many other interests and things pulling you in other directions, but you commit yourself to Maimonides week after week. And you finish the entire thing. But even after that, even after Moshe has the entire Torah, you're still left over ink. There's still what to write. Because, yes, the Torah is thought provoking ideas. It's a guide to all moral conundrums and it's a dynamic philosophical worldview. But there's still more to write. How are you going to integrate it with your life? How much of a part of it does it become of you? How does it inform your standing in line by the schmark or at the DMV or in the park? That's the. Uh, the, the question, that's what remains after the song, after the music dies. I think that the greatest program on any campus in the United States is the PODS program. For sure, in the United States, probably across the world, the PODS is an incredible program that's tailor-made. It's sort of like if you got a custom suit, this is like a custom program. You pick your interest. It's convenient location, it's pretty it's such a great for thought provoking ideas. But that's really the question. When you finish a, 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 a tractate in Talmud, you finish learning the Torah, you finish a Maimonides culmination, we get together, we eat food, we celebrate, 
because we want to see what can we do now coming forward. Is this going to be the end? Is this the emotional event that is the end and we say goodbye and we move on in our own lives? Or do we continue singing? I'll end with this. The, uh, sorry, it's Leia. I know we had the wonderful speeches. Good stuff. Amazing. Um, the final idea is that so the, the last opportunity to connect, the last mitzvah in the Torah, the last commandment, number 613, is to write the Torah scroll. Now, what if you don't know calligraphy? You don't know how to write the Torah scroll. You want to. You'd love to. But you don't know how to write it. So what do you do then? So you could hire somebody to write it on your behalf, but it's super expensive. It starts at like 60K, 70K for a basic Torah scroll, because it's got to be natural material, natural ink. It takes a long time. It's a real skill. So what do you do if you want to fulfill 613? So this idea in Jewish tradition and mysticism that every Jewish person is representative of a letter in the Torah. And there's leftover ink, as we mentioned. There's leftover parchment. Paper's empty. I imagine you go to a library, you pull out a volume off the shelf. And for example, let's use the, the Polskis for a second. So we met them at the smoker event, they're awesome. And they're a sponsor, a platinum sponsor. So you pull out a, a volume off the shelf, and it's the Polsky novel, and you begin to read. Right then, you begin to read, and you hear the incredible devotion and the sacrifice of the previous generations. The fact that we're all here today, if you think about the combined power of the heritage and the, and the <coughs> sacrifice, the legacy that exists in this room today of all our ancestors, not only in the destruction of the European jury, but the centuries and centuries and centuries before that, of all our grandparents that clung to their principles and weren't swayed by the circumstances. And you think of that, and you begin to read your family heritage, and you get up to the page, the chapter. It's your chapter. It's Dan. It's the, the heading. And it's empty. And there's the leftover ink, because the Torah was written, and our parents and our grandparents were awesome, and they accomplished so much. But now, this page, the new generation is empty now. And yet, you're at the library, so you can put your book back and take it out. Now, I'm glad I was talking to strangers. That's all. It's also a great book. But that's your legacy, it's your heritage, it's your story. And there's the leftover ink that you could write, and you could. The next pages are also empty, right? The next generation, the generation after that. And that's really the, uh, the power that exists right now in this room is that we're people that are not putting the book back on the shelf. We're continuing to write, we're taking that leftover ink, and we're putting it on our, our faces, we're living it, we're shining that light. It's really the, the message of the Hanukkah story. Right? The, the Greeks tried to divorce Jewish thought from Jewish action. They banned Torah learning, they banned programs like Maimonides, they banned Shabbat, they banned the Jewish holidays. Those are the three themes that they, they picked up. Because they wanted to say, yeah, great, philosophy, truth, thought is great, but separate that from what truth lived. And we like the menorah, we like the, the candles, we like the light shedding the, the darkness and saying, we're going to continue. We're going to write the story of this generation, the next generation that exists right here today. And perhaps it's not that sad, but it's just the next step in the journey. And hopefully you all join me in the, in the pods this semester, next semester. Uh, great trips. We got the most wonderful staff that are devoted, I would say, 24 hours a day, but it's more like 24 plus with the advent of technology. Um, more than 24 hours a day, giving their hearts and soul to try to create new opportunities and, and caring to try to make my mind even a little better. And uh, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you.